Hi everyone, uh, I'm Wes and I'm a research officer at Beat Labs and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Solidity++ which is the smart contract programming language for the Vite ecosystem. Uh, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is get Visual Studio Code. You can download that from code.visualstudio.com and it's available for most platforms. I already have that installed so I'll just open that now. Now that we're in Visual Studio Code, uh, you'll want to open a new folder. Uh, we can create a new folder and we'll call it Soul PP Lesson 1 and open that folder. And now we can install our debugger environment. Go to the Extensions menu and search for Vite Labs. And you can see Solidity++ right here, version 0.7.4, and just hit Install. And this extension contains a compiler, a debugger, and an interface for interacting with and deploying contracts. So we're pretty much all ready to get started. Um, just one more thing, we'll want to go to the debug menu and create a launch.json file and choose the Solidity++ extension. Uh, what this does is it makes it so that VS Code knows how to initiate the debugger. Um, and we can close this window, this window, and go back to the Explorer. And here we can create a new file, and let's call it hello world.soulpp. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, specify the compiler version. We can do that with this pragma. The next thing we want to do is declare a contract. So contract hello world. Now a contract in Solidity++ is similar to a class from object-oriented languages. It's a structure that contains data as well as methods and functions for manipulating that data. However, contracts are deployed onto the blockchain rather than instantiated like classes. And when we deploy a contract onto the blockchain, anybody can interact with it. Now, our contract Hello World is actually a complete contract right now and we could deploy it, but let's make it do something first. So let's add an event. Now, an event is a data structure used for logging information directly onto the blockchain. It can contain various sorts of information. In our case, our event mylog contains an address and a string. And our address, you'll notice that there's this keyword indexed here. And that just makes it so that it's easier to search for and trigger on data containing that address. Now remember that events are essentially just a, a declaration of a data structure. Events must actually be emitted for them to be stored on the blockchain. And for that, we need a function. So Solidity++ is an asynchronous language that's based around message passing. And so rather than functions, the typical interactions are through what we call message listeners. Here we define a message listener, say hello. And we're going to send, we're going to have that message take an argument of an address. Uh, let's call it destination, short for destination. We're, go, we're also going to make this message handler payable, uh, which means that we can actually send funds to the address. If you don't have that payable keyword, uh, if you try to send funds to it, it will automatically cancel that transaction and send your funds back. So it's a nice safety mechanism. So inside of a message handler, you have access to the global variable MSG. And that contains some data, like if there's any tokens that were sent to this address, it tells you what type of tokens were sent. And if you, uh, and you also want to know, you know, how many tokens were sent, or maybe you want to know who sent it. So there's all sorts of information that is contained within this message. In our case, we want this message handler to send some feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our destination address. And the destination, all addresses contain a, all addresses contain a transfer function. And what we want to do is we want to transfer the particular token that was sent to us. And we also want to transfer the total amount of tokens that were sent to us. And so we want to emit that event that we set up earlier. To do that, we have the emit keyword, 
And then we have the name of our event, my log. And let's send the address that we are sending v2. And we can just tell them, hello, have some v. And that's a nice message. OK, so we are actually all ready to deploy our contract. And since we already set up our debugger, we can just press F5. And it will start downloading the uh, Solidity++ environment. And once it loads, we should see our page pop up. So this is the debugger interface. And we can see that there's several sections of it. We won't cover everything right now, but let's take a quick look at the top. So in the network, we can see that we're in the debug network, which is just running on our local host. If you want to interact with this through other APIs, this is the WebSocket that you want to work with. Um, you can see the snapshot block height. This starts at 1 when we start our node, and it's increasing over time. And our account block, you see that we have exactly one transaction. That's because when we start up the debugger, we're automatically uh, given 1,000 V. And you can see right here we actually have this receive transaction um, where we receive this quantity of V right here. And you can check the documentation for the details on each one of these items. Now, now this is this is the address of our wallet. And we actually can we can have multiple addresses. We can even add more addresses. Let's uh, let's just keep this one for now. Down here we have our deployment interface. This is how we uh, deploy a contract. In our case, we want to deploy the Hello World contract. And there's several options here. We just need to keep the default. So let's just hit deploy, and that will launch our contract. So now we have a contract that's been deployed onto our local blockchain. We can see the contract address. Um, we can see in here in the functions that we have one function, say hello. And um, we also have automatically generated the parameters for this function. So we can send some tokens to this contract. We also have this destination parameter. So um, let's start. Let's send ourselves some feet. So we copy this address, paste it into the destination, and let's choose our token type and send ourselves 10 to the 18. This is this is measured in the smallest possible unit. So 10 to the 18 is actually one feet. So we will send ourselves exactly one feet. And to keep an eye on this balance right here, when we hit call. It drops down and then it drops back it comes back up. And we can see that three transactions just popped up. The first send transaction is us sending a message to the contract. The first receive transaction is the contract receiving that message. The second receive transaction is our address receiving funds from the contract. And in V, there's actually remember that every transaction has a pair, both a send and receive. And since we actually are missing a send transaction, and that's the send transaction of the contract sending funds to our address. So we have the receive half, just not the, the send half. And you can actually open up this, uh, the first receive transaction, and you can see that it actually is initiating a send transaction right here in the send block list. and scroll down, we can actually see there's a log entry here. Um, you can see the event, my log, and you can also see the information, hello, have some V, as well as the address, and that is indeed our address that we, that we set up. Um, the most recent transaction, if we look at that, we'll see that there actually isn't a log entry because that was just a transfer request from the contract to our account. Let's do something a little more interesting. Instead of sending it to ourselves, let's create a new address. And if we open this up, we can see we have two addresses. We right now are selecting this address, which starts with 1,000 V. And if we go back to the first one, we can see that it has only 990. Let's copy the address from the second one. Go back to the first one. So now we're calling the contract from the first address. We're going to call say hello and send ourselves 
uh, let's set ourselves 90 feet. So we have the send transaction, the receive transaction, and the receive transaction. And we can see our balance went down to 900. And if we check the balance of this wallet, we can see it went up to 1090. And if we want to send funds back, well, we could go and copy this address, select the address of the second wallet, go back to the destination, change that to be the first address, and you know we can send them a thousand feet. And you can see that our balance went down to 90. And if we check the balance of the original account, we can see that went up to 1900. So our contract is working and we're pretty much good to go. So now that we've actually tested a, and deployed a contract, what if we wanted to uh, make a change? So we can close this and go back to our debugger and we can press Shift F5 or hit this square box and that will stop the debugger. And when we start up the debugger, everything is going to be cleared so we'll have a completely fresh environment. So what sort of change do we want to make? Um, let's look at the amount of tokens that were sent to this message handler. And if it's greater than zero, we'll send one message. If it's less than zero, we'll send, oh, sorry. If it's greater than zero, we'll send one message. And if it's uh, exactly zero, we'll send a different message. So if a message dot amount is equal to zero, we'll just um, we'll just say hello. Um, otherwise, we're going to say hello, have some heat. And so that was a pretty quick change. Let's just try that out real fast. So press F5 again, launch the debugger, pops up. We can make a new address. Copy this address, go back to the first address. Deploy the contract. You see it was cleared, so we need a new contract. And copy that address in. And this time, let's give them exactly zero and we can just call the function. We have the send, the receive, and the receive. And if we open up the um, this receive transaction, we can see that we in our log we just have hello. Whereas if we were to give ourselves some Vite, and let me close this, we actually have a, a new send, receive, receive. You can see it says, hello, have some V. Our function is working as expected. Now, you'll notice this time I forgot to change the token amount, so I sent it in the smallest possible unit. So you can see that now I, I sent them only 0 0.00001 V. And if we look at their account, they have exactly 1,000 plus, you know, this very tiny amount of V very stingy of me. So, okay, um, I think that that covers everything that I wanted to cover for this first video. We're going to have some more videos coming up showing how to interact with a contract through the Vite.js API, as well as how to deploy the contract onto the Vite uh, testnet and to the Vite mainnet. Okay, that's all I have right now. See you next time.